Hello and welcome to another tutorial. We are looking at the control statements and uh, we saw uh, while and do while loops and these are the first loops that we looked at. And then now let's look at the uh, bytecode. Let's see what happens in the bytecode for the uh, uh, while loop or do while loop. So I'm going to create a new uh, method here, public static void test uh, two. And then let's go in the main method and then run test two. Right, so let's see. Um, um, we're going to say that uh, 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 Boolean condition is uh, 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 true, or uh, we can define something like, uh, let's say, int uh, int uh, x equals zero, and then while x less than ten. So as we said, uh, know that the white space between while and its argument doesn't matter. Again, while white spaces don't really matter in Java, the compiler doesn't care about it. So um, we can, uh, once we have the loop and then we can say, uh, we can print it, print uh, x equals uh, um, uh, plus x and then uh, x or plus plus x, right? And then uh, we break uh, out of the loop. So if I run this, obviously we see uh, 10 values for the X printed, zero to nine. If we say less than or equal to 10, right? These are the comparison operators and we see that 10 is also printed. But let's go with it. Uh, obviously it's always customary in programming, uh, in programming that uh, the indexing starts from zero, especially for arrays. We usually use the less than operator. So less than operator is more common than less than equal operator, all right? Now let's look at the bytecode. So um, uh, basically, let's look at the loops, while loop, open with class file viewer. Let's see what happens. Now for the if a statement, we saw that there is a bytecode if equal zero or if not equal, right? So for the if statements, we saw that two bytecodes. Uh, bytecode exit if equal, which means compare the condition to zero or check the, if the condition is false or uh, if not equal if nq means uh, check if the condition is not equal to zero which means ch check the condition is true so for the if if equal checks if false if not equal checks if the condition uh, uh, if uh, true right checks the condition is true so let's look at test three uh, where is test three All right, let's save this and now Eclipse recompiles this test two and then uh, uh, test one. All right. Uh, all right, let's close this. So we are looking at test two. Let's open this. And then uh, let's go full screen. We are looking at test two, right? So let's zoom in a little bit and then let's see what happens in the bytecode. All right. So I const zero, obviously this is a expression and we've seen this, how these expressions get evaluated. We have a variable declaration of the variable on the left and then some literal on the right. And the literals are loaded by the JVM using the I const. I mean, any const, D const or I const. I just means an integer. And we said that if you just write zero, by default, it's an integer literal. So I const underscore the value, which is zero. That's the first line. And then we're going to store it into an integer variable. So I store at which index of the stack. So which index of the stack. Uh, and remember each method call uh, JVM uh, assigns a stack to it, right? Uh, or it's called also a, a stack frame. A stack frame for a method, right? And then a stack frame is where the local variables are going to be stored. And uh, this is a static method. So the reference to the this class, this object is not going to be stored. So the index, the first index of the stack, remember this is the first local variable. And uh, we know that um, before going into the method, the parameters or arguments of the method are pushed to the stack. Here, this method doesn't take any parameters. So the first uh, index of the stack that is available for um, for uh, storing local variables is index zero, right? I store zero, which uh, in the bytecode uh, viewer, it also tells you the name. 
now I can prove you prove this to you that the parameters come uh, before the uh, the variables if I just say uh, double uh, y obviously I get a compilation error down there let's say uh, because remember um, methods in Java can't have default values for the parameters you can overload the method but you cannot have default variables so let's pass zero here and now I expect this I store for this local variable X to go to index one. So let's see what happens in test two after we save this. Let's make sure that we save this and then Eclipse recompiles. And then now we have I store two at index two, zero, one, two. So this is the third index. And uh, the question is, why is this happening? Right? Uh, why uh, basically, uh, why is it that uh, we are uh, storing an index 2? This is basically the third index. I just told you that I expected this to be iStore 1 because the second index. The reason is that a stack in J JVM, a stack in uh, JVM is 32 bit. What this means is that uh, in order to push this double, double is 64 bit. That's the guarantee that the Java language specification provides means uh, uh, when we pass this zero it's a 64 bit so two 32 bit uh, values or two positions of the stack has to be occupied so um, therefore uh, in order to push this parameter to the stack before going into the body of the method we have we need two indexes of the stack right because remember double is 64 bit Unfortunately, a stack of the JVM uh, as part of the Java language specification or JVM specification, it was designed to only be 32 bit and it was never updated to be 64 bit, right? So, a stack in JVM 32 bit in order to store a 64 bit value, um, we have to push occupy two indices of the stack. Therefore, the first available index now is index three, right? So, I'm going to remove this. I just want you to understand what's going on. Uh, all right, so we go back. If I save, it recompiles, and now uh, index zero of the stack frame for the method is available for storing its local variable. All right, and now we uh, get a new bytecode, and uh, that bytecode is called go to. So while translates into a go to uh, bytecode, right? So the bytecode for while is go to. What is go to? So go to is uh, it says a. Uh, go to line 30 what is line 30 is i load zero remember uh, basically what happens here is that uh, um, we're going to this while loop translates into a jump so go to is basically a jumped a jump uh, condition or a jump uh, instruction right let's call this instruction note that even in the assembly call assembly code for the cpus on the hardware level, there are also jump codes, right? But this go to uh, bytecode is a jump instruction for the JVM, right? Not for the CPU. And once the JIT compiler gets uh, to uh, compile this and optimize this while loop, this might this jump might translate directly into the jump for the CPU, so a hardware instruction. But for now, we're just looking at the bytecode, which are the instructions for the JVM itself. So it checks the condition. In order to check the condition, we first have to load. Uh, uh, this is a binary operator, less than. So we load the left hand side, and then we load the right hand side. We compare. In order to load the left hand side, we have to get the hold of uh, uh, I load. Uh, uh, so line thirty. Let me just break this here. So um, in order to check the condition we say that i load zero uh, load an integer at the index zero of the stack right because we know that x was local variable at the index zero of the stack and then we're going to i uh, uh, by push 10 it means that uh, push a, a integer 10 value right to the uh, to the stack and then if uh, integer compare less than now this is the condition if underscore comp integer compare less than jump to five so there's lots of jumping happening that's just because um and the five is uh, uh, if the condition we said that in the while loop we always check the condition before executing the body of the loop and that's uh, that's what you see here right um there is a go to that directly quickly jumps 
to the instructions that load the values and checks the condition once it happens it goes uh, into the body of the while and then now it has to um, uh, basically remember we are concatenating this we've seen this before concatenation in the latest version of JVM uh, Java always translates into creating a new string builder obviously in this case it wasn't really that efficient so I'm going to my personal preference instead of trying to go the uh, for this kind of simple concatenation uh, what I prefer always to do is to use a formatted string they added this uh, nice method dot formatted and then X if I save this now, um, the bytecode is much simpler. So instead of creating a new uh, a string builder to just concatenate to a, a, a string with the X, it just says uh, get this static method, print a stream, this static field out, and then we're going to load a constant. So um, this is this entire string literal is a constant in the string constant pool, percent D, and then I const one all right so um, uh, 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 I guess uh, in the past we didn't actually uh, look at the um, uh, what happens in the uh, basically uh, this bytecode x plus plus so let me just quickly uh, also look at this uh, uh, let's say plus plus x it's also we should have looked at this before but let's look at it here so after the loop terminates so in the test two um, or actually maybe let's create a new quickly create a new method public static void test three and I'm going to say int x equals zero and plus plus x and then x plus plus let's look at the bytecode of these two I think that's very instructive to look at these test three so when I save Eclipse automatically uh, recompiles. Know that this warning is related to we're not using X anywhere, right? Uh, it's a local variable that is not being used. So the reason it's a warning because if you use a local variable, even if you increment or decrement it, you're still not reading the value of it. So there's no point in having that local variable. So icons zero, obviously, uh, again, the assignment we have to uh, load the left hand side as an integer literal and then store it in the first uh, or the zeroth index of the stack in the x variable so the increment and decrement bytecodes is there is a, a specific um, bytecode i inc means integer increment i int this is a, a same for the next one so plus plus x and x plus plus they uh, basically translate into uh, the same bytecode obviously at the end we return right now um <clears throat> this returns void we're not returning any value if you recall i said that these two right now in the bytecode it looks like uh, plus plus x and x plus plus are pretty much the same bytecode uh, but we said that in the past there is a difference or a subtle difference between these two right x plus plus and uh, plus plus x and the difference was that uh, the return value of the these two expressions are different right but right now we're not assigning the return value of this expression to any variable that's why the bytecode is more or less the same it says i increment or integer increment uh, by one right so um uh, this zero is the index of the stack so this zero means uh, uh, the first or the position zero on the stack is an integer and incremented by one right and uh, if I say for example x uh, plus equal to okay so let's keep this and let's say x equals a uh, plus equal to now let's see what happens and uh, now it translates into the same increment at index zero of the stack but a value of two so this means I increment, increment an integer at index zero, index of a stack is zero. And we know that the zeroth position on the stack is a variable X, which is an integer, 32 bit integer is stored. And it says incremented by two, right? So this is the increment size or increment step two, right? 
and then in, in the bytecode viewer in Eclipse, it also tells you what is the name, the actual name of the variable that we use for storing this uh, index of the stack, which is x. So x plus 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 x x plus equal to all these translate into i increment. It tells the JVM which index of the stack, where in the, which local variable, and then how many times, right? How much increment? Now, <clears throat> let's see what happens if we try to uh, get the return value of this plus plus x and then int uh, let's call this y1 and then y2 is uh, x plus plus let's see what happens now if i save it recompiles so in order to evaluate this remember assignment is a binary operator so we look at the right hand side and uh, and then evaluate it first in order to evaluate this first we have to first load the value of x that's why um we are i load we increment we basically say i load x first read the value of the x variable and then uh, uh, basically uh, we say that uh, uh, and then uh, i store one so we say that uh, store an integer of value one uh, uh, I store uh, store an integer uh, an integer in the index one of the stack. Remember, x was stored in the index zero of the stack. We say that uh, store uh, a variable or store an integer value at the uh, index one of the stack. What the what value is going to be stored? The last value that was loaded, which was the value of x, and then uh, uh, basically uh, I load zero. And then uh, uh, I increment zero one, and you probably can see what's going on, right? So in the bytecode, uh, we said that plus plus x. Um, so let's see. Uh, uh, I think uh, basically. Uh, what happens so I store 0 increment 1 I inc increment 2 so after this okay the first bytecode is here so there's one more bytecode associated with this so let's see what happens for this line of code um, I increment at index 0 on a stack which is x by 1 so we increment x by 1 and then uh, um, uh, uh, and then uh, we uh, store it in the x so we increment the x and the value is uh, still stored in the x so x gets updated right and then the value of x is loaded which is ha now has the updated value so let me just point it here x has the updated value it was increment now new value of x is loaded and then uh, uh, y1 gets the new value of x and then uh, what happens here is that uh, I guess uh, for the next one so we uh, store in the y1 and then uh, uh, I load 0 we load the x which was incremented before and then increments basically and then I store y2 now let's see what happens here um, So x plus plus uh, basically what happens here is that uh, um, let me maybe it's better if I comment the previous one everything before this so I store one uh, I load so here's uh, so we start with I load uh, zero all right for this part uh, we get the value of x so get the old value of x get the old value of x and then uh, uh, i increment so uh, update uh, new value to x x is uh, getting the new value but i store to y2 remember um, we loaded the old value of x so y2 gets the old value of x gets the old value of x so uh, this was a, a very interesting look at this increment uh, uh, postfix prefix uh, operators and the bytecode. And then next, uh, we're going to uh, continue looking at the while bytecode. For now, I want you to remember that the while bytecode, it has to check the condition regularly. That's why it has this jump, go to instruction. 
and then the go to instruction goes to the instructions that uh, basically check the condition the byte codes that associated with the uh, checking the condition and then obviously after the go to and the condition checks we have to um, check whether the condition is true or false so uh, right now the byte code is to compare these two integers um, uh, uh, so compare two integers less than and if we jump to basically uh, to the code that has the body of the while statement right so i hope you enjoyed this lecture please stay tuned and i'll see you in the next one